My name is Admiral Tim Fraser. I'm the UK's Vice Chief of Defence Staff. I'm obviously a Royal Naval Officer who uh, started his career in 1982, um, served in surface ships, commanded Type 42 destroyers in the aircraft carrier, uh, worked in uh, this region as the UK Maritime Component Commander in Bahrain, uh, as well as um, serving as the Chief of Joint Operations, uh, uh, commanding UK overseas operations all over the globe. Um, I'm here to speak about maritime security and the security challenges facing both India and the UK, and it's a real privilege to be able to speak to the Brains Trust. India has a wealth of uh, experience of the region, obviously, and also of maritime security, and I'm very keen during my visit to learn uh, from you. Today, the strategic context feels less stable. We're living in a time of profound change, change that is happening at a scale and a pace hitherto unseen, and one which inevitably feeds instability. The threats to both our countries, our allies and the rules-based international system are evolving fast. These threats are compounded by the extraordinary rate of advance of technology. The distinctions between peace and war, home and away, state and non-state threats, virtual and reality, are increasingly blurred. Our adver adversaries and competitors exploit these themes, investing intelligently to undermine our strengths and target our weaknesses. As a nation like India, with a very strong economy that relies on international trade, these global interests remain very important and we will continue to engage and play a central role in those multilateral global security mechanisms. We see ourselves as a natural partner for India. The Indian Ocean is a significant part of the maritime global commons. Its security and accessibility has global significance. It is vital to world trade and prosperity. It is also a region with its fair share of threats. We have, sat, we have seen in recent times how illegal, unreported and unregulating fishing is driving the piracy or negative economic consequences for those literal states in the region. Weapons and drug smuggling help to fuel serious organised crime and terrorism. And attempts to limit freedom of navigation or interference in economic zones or maritime borders. Meanwhile, the spectre of natural disasters, which have become all too frequent, remain ever present and quite, should quite rightly draw an international response. Alongside these non-traditional and non-state threats, freedom of navigation and freedom of access to the global commons of the sea cannot be taken for granted and must be preserved. It is why upholding the rules-based system that has done so much for peace and stability is a common thread that runs through maritime UK strategy. In the maritime domain, a strong UK-India relationship provides a platform to tackle these challenges together as partners. Those challenges drive an increasing demand signal on the Royal Navy, which includes presence in this region, whether that be on national tasking, bi or multilateral frameworks. The UK is a dialogue partner of the, of the IORA, has member states as IONS, and as a signatory to the, signatory to the Indo-Pacific Maritime Coordination Centre. All of these are important for us. Our forward presence helps us to respond when we need to. When the artery of world trade through the Straits or Mose was threatened, we were able to reduce the risk to British and international shipping, ensuring the safety of shipping passing through the Straits and upholding the freedom of navigation. But sharing that maritime security role amongst allies as widely as possible will help mitigate the impact on any one nation's existing commitments, whilst demonstrating a unifying stance on protecting global trade. Tackling these broad and deep challenges that I've described is not straightforward and depends first and foremost on better information sharing. With this in mind, very much support the opening of India's new Information Fusion Centre, a centre that will enable engagement with partner nations and enable the further development of comprehensive maritime domain awareness and the sharing of information on vessels of interest. But understanding these threats isn't enough. We also need, need to be willing and able to respond. And for the UK part, that means first and foremost, we must be present. The Royal Navy's persistent presence in the region over the last 18 months through the deployments of Sutherland, Argyle 
Albion and Montrose and our mine hunting force as proof of our determination to do just this. Operating in an area that stretches from the Red Sea to the Arabian Gulf and the Indian Ocean as far as Tanzania and to Diego Garcia, throughout this area we maintain UK warships 365 days a year at sea. The eight drug interdictions made by one ship alone, HMS Dragon, on its way to and from Exercise Concan in November 2018, whilst excellent news, is an example of just how big the challenge we face, one that no individual nation can do alone. The relationship between the Royal Navy and the Indian Navy, natural and long-standing partners, goes of course further than just information sharing. It's only natural that this would be the case given the obvious similarities between our two navies, our shared outlook, common goals and very clear intentions for the future. And given that shared outlook, I think there's a real opportunity to provide mutual support and capability as we go forward, investing in cutting edge artificial intelligence to harness the opportunities that rapid advances in technology present amongst others. Our navies already operate together through the well-established annual exercise CONCAM program. Most recently, Arnes Tarkash and Ace Miss Defender participated together in the English Channel, conducting anti-submarine warfare and boarding operation serials. The ship's companies spent time on each other's ships, working, working together, building bonds of trust and gaining understanding of how each other worked. There are many other areas where we see potential opportunities to work together to cooperate, ranging from safety to reform to electric propulsion to cooperation on aircraft carriers. A Royal Naval Destroyer will be in Mumbai next month, where we hope we continue this dialogue on electric propulsion amongst many other opportunities to support Make in India. And looking forward to 2021, HMS Queen Elizabeth and the Carrier Strike Group will have her maiden operational deployment and will operate in the Indian Ocean. We face a period of unprecedented technological change and a feeling of growing instability. There are hugely complex challenges ahead, facing both our nations and are multiplying. I know we share a very clear understanding of both those opportunities and the threats that we face today in this incredibly complex maritime domain. There is an onus on us as large economies that rely on there being a robust maritime security for both our international trade and for our security to work together to stay ahead of our adversaries and competitors and reinforce this rules-based international system. That requires competent and capable navies and strong cooperation. It is that appreciation of the intensifying, diversifying threats we face that underlines the value of sea power, both here in the United Kingdom and in India.